is folk music's accidental legend, Elizabeth Cotton, Libba to her friends, her thousands and thousands of friends. But as befits an accidental legend, millions more know her without knowing that they do. Ask them if they've heard of Elizabeth Cotton, they say no. Hum a few bars of her song, Freight Train, and that all changes. Freight Train, Freight Train, rocks so fast. Freight Train, Freight Train, rocks so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on. They won't know what route I'm on. Her best songs are as likely to be heard at coffee houses, concert stages, campfires, or school bus sing-alongs as any in the American folk canon. And millions have learned how to play guitar to her spacious rolling finger style, known everywhere as cotton picking. But Libba never intended to be a professional singer, much less a famous songwriter, an influential guitarist, a legend. It was all a glorious accident. She was born in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in 1895. She learned banjo and guitar as a little girl, but stopped playing when she started her own family. Accidents of fate and two by one particular little girl took her back to her music. Near the end of World War II, Cotton had a temporary job at the Landsberg Department Store in Washington, D.C. After selling some dolls to a friendly mother with two daughters in tow, Cotton saw one of the kids wandering the aisles by herself, nine-year-old Peggy Seeger. Cotton returned Peggy to her mother, the great composer and arranger of folk songs, Ruth Crawford Seeger, who told Libba to call if she ever wanted another job. She was soon working at the Seeger home. My earliest memories of her are of gentleness, Peggy recalls now. She was an extremely gentle woman. She spoke slowly, and I don't think I ever saw her angry. She adored my mother, and my mother adored her. They would sit and talk for hours. Peggy Seeger's second accident was the one that gave Elizabeth Cotton to the world. Being the Seeger household, there were musical instruments hanging everywhere, including a small guitar in the kitchen. Cotton would pull it down when no one was around, close the door, and play quietly to herself. One day, Peggy walked in on her. Libba immediately stood up, began to apologize. Stay right there, Peggy said, and ran to get her older brother, Mike. They made her play and play and play and became the first of millions of young people to learn how to finger pick from her. Nights at dinner time, I'd cook dinner and put my dinner on the table. And that's about all the work I'd have to do. The kids would clear the table, wash my dishes, tell me to sit down and play freight train. Another of Cotton's songs was created in the old way, over much time. She used it as a bedtime game to lure children to sleep by letting them make up verses the way she had as a little girl. It is a true traditional folk song, written over generations and handed along one to the next, but all by the same woman, first as child, then mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. It is now one of the most beloved folk songs in the world, called Shake Sugary. This is a song that my seven, eight grandchildren wrote this song. I mean great-grandchildren. Shake sugary, each child got a verse. But I don't know all the verses, so I'm gonna sing what I can remember right now. Y'all gonna help me sing this. I know something. I ain't going to tell, I'm going to heaven in a ground pea shell. Oh, Lord, oh, me, didn't I shake the sugar tree? Everything I got is in pawn. Everything I got is in pawn. I have a little secret I ain't going to tell. I'm going to heaven, and I ain't going down to. Oh, Lord, on me, didn't I shake sugary? Everything I got is in pawn. Everything I got is in pawn. The Seeger family made sure that Cotton's music was known to the burgeoning folk revival. In 1958, she recorded her first album for Folkways Records, and her song Freight Train Traveled the World. Campus hootenannies were full of kids who learned how to play to that song, though no one could quite get her fingering right. Cotton played a right-handed guitar left-handed, upside down, playing the bass strings with her fingers, the treble melody with her thumb. 
Libba performed into her 90s, often with her most stalwart champion and first pupil, Mike Seeger. John Ullman, in his wonderful liner notes to Smithsonian Folkways' 2004 album, Shake Sugary, recalls an elderly cotton singing for a group of children. With all the bluntness of innocence, a nine-year-old boy asked her, how come you're not dead yet? While all the grown-ups in the room gasped, Libba smiled fondly at the boy. I guess the good Lord's just not ready for me yet, she said. She always made sure that her children, as she called all her audiences, got what they came for. Oh, now children, she'd say, have I played you my freight train? I know you love that freight train. Go sing it. All right. Freight train, freight train, run. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on. They won't know what route I'm gone. When I die, Lord, bury me deep. Way down on old Chelsea Street. Then I can hear old number nine as she comes rolling by. I lay in bed at night and, and yet stewing over on the track trying to come in, and he, he said, choo, 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 chicka, 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 chicka. and I'd go to sleep here and that the rest of the night. So I guess that gave me a, a mind to write something about the freight train. What's that? Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on. She was a queen, Peggy Seeger said, remembering her dear Libba now, so many years later. Then she rephrased that, to be sure it was the compliment she meant it to be. No, that's not quite it, Peggy said. Elizabeth Cotton was what a queen should be. 